Hello everybody, it's on the Guy 3 here, and welcome back to Dragon Ball Super Reviews. Today we'll be doing the review of episode 46. This episode is titled, Goku vs. Copy Vegeta. Who will prevail? It's the end of the Superhuman Water mini arc, and I gotta say, thank God, first of all. But second of all, I just... I don't really know how to feel about this one, to be honest, you guys. I, I don't. It, this one went exactly... It, it was a lot of I don't care for the most part. There are... Two moments, one caught my interest and the other was actually not that bad. I actually liked that as being the solution to this arc. But long story short, this arc is basically Goku and Vegeta doing their fight like they were supposed to. And to be honest, I don't like the idea that they're pushing this whole Goku versus Vegeta thing. Because one, this isn't the real Vegeta. And two, like I said last time when I reviewed the uh, episode 45, I was like, we already have Majin Vegeta, Baby Vegeta, Vegeta when he was evil uh, back in the first season, and then this Vegeta. It's like, we have too many evil Vegetas as lame excuses for why Goku needs to fight Vegeta in some way, shape, or form. I, I'm not digging it. So, yeah, they tried too hard to be the Majin Vegeta versus uh, Goku fight from the Buu Saga, which honestly was the one of the greatest moments of the Buu Saga. The only, like, if I were to tell you, hey, what's the one real reason to watch the Buu Saga, it'd be that. But, yeah, this one, I do like that Goku used instant transmission and one part of the fight to, to like, basically mess with Vegeta's head. It was kind of cool. I liked that. But other than that, well, the copy Vegeta. And then there was the running gag of Vegeta getting mad that his copy, which is basically has all of his powers, is still losing to Goku. But then he got mad at Goku for losing to Vegeta because he knows he'll die if he loses. So it was one of those Vegeta having a mental conflict breakdown between uh, does he want Goku to win or does he want Vegeta to win. It, it was It's dumb. And then... We got the whole thing where, oh, and I hate this, the the one member of the Patafu world, he's all like, wait a minute, I just discovered how to stop uh, the clone Vegeta without having to kill him. If we kill the core, then we can weaken the clones. It's like, what the hell? Why didn't you mention that before? And they even say, why didn't you mention it before? And use the lame excuse. Well, if you've been alive for 1,000 years, you tend to forget things. You can't forget something that damn important. I'm sorry. It's the whole reason you're on this planet with that pacifier on your freaking neck. You're defending the planet from that thing. So learning how to stop it should basically be the thing that comes from you from the day you're born to the day you die so i'm not even gonna sit there and believe that it's a lame excuse for why he didn't remember and the you want to know what the worst part is in episode 44 when i did this review and well when episode 45 came around i was like okay this gives a chance for goats in the trunks to do something while goku and vegeta do the fight so goku and vegeta and copy vegeta would be the fight that happens but goten and trunks can fight off the main villain or the one pulling the strings and take care of that as the, and be the focus. They'll be the overall focus while Goku and Vegeta fighting will just be one of those things that happens on occasion. Kind of like in the Majin Buu saga how Goku and Majin Vegeta were fighting, but the main concern was Gohan and Supreme Kai stopping Majin Buu. Like I thought it was going to do it in that format. And to a way they did it in that format in this episode. Unfortunately this is the final episode of this saga, so they had to cram all of that really fast. It, it looks bad in animation and it's mostly just them running away uh, trying to find where the core is, and the core tried to absorb Jocko, and it avoided Jocko as a running joke, ha ha, he's so weak he can't even be absorbed, whatever, I, it was an attempt to be funny, and it would have been funny if the saga wasn't so boring and lackluster. However, they do end up finding the core, and the core actually finds them because it tries to absorb trunks. When it tries to absorb tr trunks, uh, Vegeta actually is, it has his time extended. And I'm talking about the real Vegeta, not the clone Vegeta. He has his time extended for how long he can stay, because three minutes was asking for too much, even for Goku. So the, uh, he got his time extended by putting a pacifier in his mouth, which can, uh, has the seal on it, which can extend the time that he has to stay. When Vegeta tried to stop the goo from absorbing trunks, 
uh, it didn't work and it was about to absorb Vegeta but then Manaka ends up accidentally coming back into consciousness due to the shock of everything that went down Manaka steps back and crushes the core on accident and because he crushes the core on accident the core dies and clone Vegeta gets weaker and Goku kills clone Vegeta I gotta say that was the highlight of this entire episode is Manaka accidentally killing the core that's great I really love that Manaka is taking the win for most of these sagas, cause it, it for it's in, for one it's an Akira Toriyama move, making the unexpected thing the solution to the the whole conflict. Two, I just love that Manaka is basically responsible for defeating Hit and the uh, the core to the superhuman water. So yeah, I just think that's funny. He basically has two win wins under his under his belt right now so i thought that was pretty cool i like that and like manaka is actually becoming a really good like favorite character of mine just because of his really silly victories it's like you know how hercule is responsible technically for helping defeat sale because he threw android 16's head to gohan allowing him to go super saiyan 2 and then when he uh had everyone gather energy so Goku can get the spirit bomb. He helped those victories. Manaka just plain is the victor of these situations just due to misunderstanding. So yeah, at that point, everything saved. All's well to end well. Trunks and Goten can actually go to Patafu anytime they want and just chill. So I thought that was kind of cool too. But other than that, the saga's over. I'm glad it's over because it was a really cheap way to get Goku and Vegeta to fight each other. And basically that is the end of that because they actually take a little bit of time to do a trailer for uh, – they do two trailers actually for the incoming future Trunk Saga. And a lot of you all are probably wondering, Tyrone, you've been doing all this Dragon Ball Z stuff. How do you feel about future Trunks and his art? I will state how I feel about future Trunks' arc or at least the whole future Trunks scenario like – tomorrow probably tomorrow the day after that because i have some choice words for everything that's gone down as far as the future trunks but we do get that trailer and i gotta say from face value i'll tell you this right now about the black goku thing being the villain i'm not liking that first of all when you make a hero the bad guy when you make a bad guy version of the main character it kind of feels like you ran out of ideas it kind of feels like oh we can't do anything to make a creative new villain, so we just got to make a villain that is the exact same as a hero. Second, we just came from a saga where the clone evil Vegeta is the is the bad guy. So now it's like, wait, are Goku and Vegeta so popular now and so in the spotlight that we can't even have new villains? They're even outshining villains now? It just sort of doesn't sit right with me. But I'll give a lot of my opinions when I do the saga review, when the saga's finally over, and when the episodes come by. So the next episode is the, FO, uh, the SOS, A Black New Enemy Appears. See you all then. Tyron the God 3, out.